Hello and welcome to today's lesson on regular expressions. This is lesson number 10 in a 52-week series on what every web administrator needs to know to become successful. This is a series on various tools, tricks, and techniques that will benefit you as a web administrator. Today's topic is on regular expressions, but stop. Don't tune me out yet. First, hear me out on why I believe this is important for you and why I believe this is not as difficult as it first appears. Regular expressions, what are they? First of all, they're used for string matches. For example, you may be familiar with using a star or a wildcard for different comparisons in the command prompt and other places. Regular expressions take that much further and allow complex logic in your string compares. They're used with tools like URL Rewrite, a tool I covered in the last two lessons. They're also used in tools like Visual Studio you can use for complex compares. They're used for ASP.NET. As a programmer, you can use them. JavaScript, you'll use them for various input validation, like your phone number, zip or postal code, or email address. And if you keep watching, you'll actually see regular expressions used all over the place. So having a basic understanding of the key regular expressions, I think, will really benefit you. My goal today is to take about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and cover the essential basics to bring this topic down to earth and make it as easy to understand as possible. Now, I'll tell you, this is quite the feat. And I will talk fast today because there's so much to cover. And so you may need to pause and rewind and watch some parts a couple times. But hopefully I can fit it all in in an easy to digest way. And when we're done, I'm hoping that you will say, wow, this is actually not as difficult as I first thought it would be. Turns out that I didn't pull it off in 10 minutes. So I'm breaking this into two parts. More on this later. So take a look at this screenshot here, regular expressions. And I took three random expressions. The top one's fairly easy. The other two I Googled and just found some. It looks like a mess. How in the world would we ever understand this? And what we want to do is pull that apart. In fact, it looks almost non-human, really. And believe it or not, it's actually digestible. And it is possible to understand. And I think you'll surprise yourself at, at what we'll accomplish here today. First, before I dive in, let's cover a couple tools and resources that are available to you. In fact, just this last week, someone mentioned a tool called Expresso. And you can actually just do a search for Expresso regular expressions is how I found this. I tried it out. Actually, I read through the 30-minute tutorial. And great tool, very great tool. And they have, you can see the test mode, which you can put in the regular expression. You can put sample test in and get the results. It has this analyzer, which allows you to actually break down the various parts of the regular expression. Really powerful. And then design mode allows you to use all your special characters. Is it a digit, white space, alphanumeric character? And finally, there's an expression library that has uh, tons of different commonly used expressions, 10-digit phone number, for example, that you can use. So I looked, lo love the tool, actually, and just tried it out here today. I'm not going to use it for my demo here today, primarily because the one URL rewrite offers for us is going to work really good for showing off today's topic. Uh, also, another tool available is regexlib.com, and this has a number of different resources uh, available to you. So a lot of people have posted, have answered. It's a forum. There's You can browse the expressions. You can see different types of expressions you can use too. Um, finally, if for URL rewrite specific rules, go to forums.is.net and click on the URL rewrite module. And it's very active here. You can see those are just uh, documentation of the top part. And down here you see the topics and you can see People are getting the responses, and this is just a recent one from yesterday. It hasn't been responded to yet. But you can see lots of activity, pages and pages and pages of help. And so I encourage you to check out these resources. This is actually what I don't cover today. If you still have questions specifically with URL rewrite, take a look here. And here's where you can post really good questions and expect to get answers. So let's take a look at an example here. And let's use our tool, URL Rewrite. So today's mindset is focused on URL Rewrite, but the rules will actually apply to other environments as well. So let's create a blank rule. And we're just going to say example rule here. And for the sake of here, uh, one of our first rules, I'll come back to this shortly. And let's add a condition called, let's say, HTTP post. And we're going to say www.contoso. Com. So if it matches contoso.com, what we want to do is let's do a custom response. Let's throw a 500.0 error, and we're going to say error, just joking with you here. So we can see it's not really an error, but it is, sure looks like it, wcontoso.com, and we can see that we've thrown this custom error. So now let's go back and break this into parts. 
So we can see this condition bound on, this is the domain name for contoso.com, we'll catch it. Now notice it, we have this very precise, it needs to have the www. If we try again, then we'll try without the www, and notice that it doesn't catch the rule. So of course it has to match exactly what I asked it to match. So now let's actually break this into parts, and here's where the tool that comes in really handy is this test pattern tool right here. It's available up here at the URL rule, or also within these rules. So we do a test pattern here, and now let's start to break this into pieces. So contosa.com, and we'll spend most of our time in here now. And this has to match. For example, if we have without the www, of course, it doesn't match. Okay, so let's actually start to look through these rules. I have 10 plus 1 regular expression rules that I believe is important to know. So the first one is the caret or the hat to start and the dollar sign to end. Okay, so let's try this out. So if we do, for example, just a TOS, just something in the middle, and actually I'm doing it backwards here, so let's do it here. TOS, www.contoso.com. Notice it matches. Now it only matched the part that it matches, right? So because it had a TOS in it. It's almost like if you were thinking of wild cards, it would be almost like an asterisk asterisk. The asterisk is assumed. You don't have to enter it. If I enter it, it has to start with the caret. Now I test it, of course it fails, right? But if I say anything that starts with a dub dub dub, of course this works, right? Of course it starts with an ABC dub dub dub. It doesn't. You get the point. The caret signifies the beginning. Okay, so we're going to do contoso.com. Now notice that if I do and I do a typo with lots of M's, it still passes, right? So we end with a dollar sign. It seems kind of funny that we start with the caret and with the dollar sign, but that's how it is. So now if we use this, it's a nearly precise string. Okay, so that's the first lesson to know. Now the second is a dot is a special character. Now notice I have some dots in here, right? And that's actually a reserved character. If I would switch that dot here to a www here and hit test, notice it still passes because that dot means any character, not just a dot. So you, to do that, and the lesson after this, uh, the point, our third one here, is that the slash is to escape a special character. So we can see here, but let's replace that here. Well, first of all, I'll show you how it will fail. And we test and see it fails. But now if we switch this back to a dot, it doesn't work because of this. So let's fix that. There you go. So now you can see www.contosa.com. Now this string here is a 100% static. There's no other options that would work and pass this condition. It has to be exactly contosa.com, www.contosa.com for it to work. Okay, so moving along to the fourth item here is to repeat zero or more times um, is our star, and then a plus is to repeat one or more. So this is kind of a fun one. Let's take a look at this. Let's save this. Let's go back up to this top rule here. And what the this comes in really handy. Notice this rule that I use often is this dot star, which means the dot we now know is a wild card. It means any character. And then that character has to, if it's immediately afterwards, this instruction, the two of these characters belong together. And this means that it has to appear zero or more times. So let's say something. Notice this passes. The entire word something because any character, any number of times. Now if I make this blank, completely blank, it also passes because any character, zero or more times, passed. Here's an interesting one though. Let's switch this to a plus. Now this is fun because notice here, I remember the first time I saw this I was wondering, well, what's the difference? When would you use in the real world a plus versus a star? Well the plus means it has to appear one or more times. So again, something occurs, it's exactly the same. But if it's blank, it fails. And so the reason is because it has to occur, some character has to occur one or more times. So this is a perfect combination of dot plus to say is there some text, something, anything, whatever you want in there. Whereas a dot star, dot asterisk, means it has to occur any number of times, zero or more. Okay, so the next is our or. And we can use this pipe or the or. So let's actually go in here and we want this to be contosa.com, but now let's add something else. Let's go to our test pattern. And we're going to put in parentheses. 
here, and you can do this, I'll cover parentheses shortly, and we would use the pipe, we're going to say .com or .net. And if we do www.contoso.com, notice that passes, contoso.net passes, but contoso.org does not. Okay, so this is already starting to look a little bit cryptic, but hopefully you're actually able to understand it quite well. This concludes the first half of our lesson on regular expressions. Next week we'll pick up where we left off and cover the remaining rules, including back references. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you again next week.